Welcome to the Next Level Facebook Ads Podcast with Phil Graham. We help you master Facebook ads and give you an unfair advantage over your competition. Are you ready? Let's go. Hey, what's up, podcast family? Welcome to the Next Level Facebook Ads Podcast, episode 285. I'm Phil Graham. I've got a great episode today for you, my friends. I'm going to be sharing and teaching you what I call my micro segmented and smart retargeting Facebook ad formula. It's a lot of words, but it's really powerful. Wouldn't it be nice to learn how to retarget on Facebook and Instagram the smart way and the effective way and do it in a way that very few advertisers really know how to do or do properly? So much of your success depends on how good your retargeting is yet most people fail because of it. Most advertisers are flushing money down the toilet by either not doing retargeting or doing it the wrong way. I do not want you to flush money down the toilet. And I'm going to be sharing the types of campaigns we run, the objective we use, some of the ad angles we use, and how to build smart retargeting audiences. I hope you guys are having a great week and doing really well. This is one of my most favorite times of the week is recording the podcast. So I'm really glad you're here. If you guys do want to get in touch, maybe you're looking for some one-on-one coaching so you can finally learn ads the right way, or maybe you want somebody to run your ads for you that you trust so you can do what you do best for either one of those things. Just go to my website, philgramdigital.com, or you can DM me on Instagram at philgramdigital and let's connect. Now, as usual, I'm going to keep this episode short, sweet, full of value, and very actionable for you guys. So let's jump right into it and talk about how people get into your retargeting audiences, because there's three main levels and touch points that we have that get people into our audiences. Level one is when they engage with something that you do on Facebook, especially when it comes to ads. They could watch a video of yours, even if they didn't click to go to the website, but they watched on Facebook or Instagram, or maybe they messaged your page or liked or commented on one of your ads. That would all fit level one. So that that would be one way they can get into your retargeting list. Level two are people that have visited your website or any page that has your pixel on it. So it could be landing pages, sales pages, blogs, websites, et cetera that are yours, whether they got there from ads or any other way. If they visited any of your pages, that would be level two. And then level three is really the highest level. And that is people that are either on your email list or their actual customers, either current or previous customers, or they are a lead of some kind. So typically all of our retargeting audiences fall into at least one of these levels, if not multiples of these levels. So that's how they get into our retargeting audiences. Next, let's talk about how to actually build your micro segmented smart retargeting audiences. You should have fun with this because this is where all the power is. You can do so much here and hardly any advertisers do this right. So when you segment your retargeting ads, what you're doing is, You're building audiences that are specific to behavior that somebody has already taken. You're not guessing at all. It's specific to behavior and actions that somebody's already done. So think about it for a second. You can segment based off of pages that somebody has visited on your website or products or services they've either bought or visited on your website or whether they were a lead or a customer or content they engage with on your website or Facebook or Instagram, or timing or intent or any number of things. I'm going to give you guys some examples in just a second, but those are all examples of different ways you can segment. So for example, let's start with products and services. If you have more than one product or more than one service, then you should have ads that focus on each one of those individually, not just one that has everything. So when you have an ad that's focused on, let's say one product and then ad two is focused on a different product, you can create audiences of people that have engaged with that specific ad. 
Or let's say on your website, you've got pages that are specific to your product or service. You can also create audiences of people that have visited that specific page only, for example. And if they visited the page, you know that they were probably interested in that because why else would they have visited the page, right? So then you can create a retargeting ad that is specific to people that were interested in that exact product or that exact service. That's one example. Another example, and this is one of my favorite, is building retargeting audiences and ads based off of intent. So regardless of the product or service, based off of intent. And let me give you an example. This is gonna be a great example because it's gonna be an example whether it is a product or a service. So let's say you're either a dentist and you wanna get somebody to come in and visit your dentist office or your e-commerce and you're selling $100 you know, smart toothbrushes. For either one of those things, let's think about why somebody might want to go to the dentist or get a really good toothbrush. There's probably 10, 15, or 20 different reasons, but I'm just going to give two as an example. One reason could be because they want white teeth or whiter teeth. Maybe their teeth are not white. Maybe they're stained. Maybe they have self-confidence issues and they feel like their teeth should be whiter. That's one reason somebody would either go to the dentist to get a cleaning or maybe get a really good toothbrush. Another reason though, different reason would be maybe they want healthier teeth and they want to prevent gum disease. That's another reason why somebody would either go to a dentist or get a really good toothbrush. Now those are two very different reasons, aren't they? So somebody that's focused on preventing gum disease might already have white teeth or might not care that much about it. They might want white teeth, but it's not the trigger that would get them to actually buy or come in. So if we're talking to people that are interested in white teeth, but we're talking about gum disease, that's not gonna work very well, is it? Or let's say we're talking to the people that are interested in preventing gum disease, but we're talking about how white their teeth can get if they buy our toothbrush or come into the dentist, that's not gonna work very well. However, if we talk to the gum disease people about how this can help prevent gum disease. And we talk to the people who want white teeth about, guess what? White teeth. Our chances of success go way higher. That's matching the intent. So when you create retargeting ads that match the intent, that can become very, very powerful. And that's just an example of two intent options. There could be lots of different options. Now, how do you identify if somebody's like a gum disease person or a white teeth person, for example, in this example, you would identify that through having an ad and or content on your website that's specific to gum disease. And then having a different ad and a different page on your website or a different video that's specific to white teeth. And then you can retarget people that engage with those specific pieces of content or pages without guessing. And you could do that for different types of intent. So no matter what kind of service or product you have, there's lots of different intent options. There's going to be some that are better than others. So you want to start off with those, but be very specific and then create retargeting ads, targeting those exact people. And then in the ad itself, in the copy, don't just have it be general, but talk about that very thing, the very intent that they were interested in that got them to engage in the ad in the first place. And you will just be amazed at how well that can do. So you can segment by product or service intent. You can also segment by certain pages they visited on, on your website. Like I said, you can segment also by specific videos they have engaged with on Facebook, even if they did not go to your website. This is a really good reason at the top of the funnel, funnel to run ads, especially video ads, that are not just random broad ads, but also very micro content specific. Like if you were a personal trainer, you could have a video for building muscle and then a different one for losing weight and then a different one for maybe learning how to do things the right way, like you know how to lift weights correctly. You could have a different one for reducing stress. Those are like four different examples. And then you could see 
how many people watch which videos and then retarget those people with the same topic of the video in your retargeting campaign. It's so powerful. Another cool segment is timing. You can actually retarget people that have visited your site more often than others in the last 30 to 90 days. And that can be powerful too. So there's a lot of different ways you can segment your retargeting. When you are doing segmented retargeting, don't guess. Make sure you're doing it based off of data, based off of their behavior and things they have either done or not done. And then number three, make sure in that segmented retargeting, be smart about it and actually match your ad copy to the topic intent or segment or product or service that they engaged with to get on the retargeting list in the first place. And that can be amazingly powerful. And then I've got two other quick retargeting audiences for you. One of them is an abandoned cart retargeting or also abandoned leads. So if somebody puts something in your shopping cart for your product or service, but they don't check out, or let's say they visit a webinar registration page or a lead magnet download page, but they don't give you their email address, they essentially abandoned the sale or abandoned the lead. Well, it's a great time to get back in front of them because they might actually still be interested. They might need to see more from you. So those are also some great audiences. And then last but not least, this one's really cool. And I don't really see anybody else talking about it. And it's what I call email unread retargeting. So let's say you have 10,000 people on your email list. And it doesn't matter what you have. You could have 1,000, 200, 100,000. Let's say you've got 10,000 and you send out an email. And let's say you get a good open rate of 20%. That means 2,000 open, but 8,000 did not open your email. They might not have even seen it. Well, I take that 8,000 and I create a CSV file of those people. I upload that to Facebook as a custom audience and I send them the email as a retargeting ad. Now I do format it a little bit differently so it's not like an, an exact email. But whatever concept or, or stuff I was talking about in the email, I send it as an ad. And that sometimes can boost our open rates from 20% to 50, 60, 70% or more because the next time they log on to Facebook or Instagram, they might see our ad and they did not have to open an email and they didn't open the email in the first place, which is why they get it. So that can be extremely powerful. Now we don't do this for all of our emails, but certainly if there's something specific you're promoting or something you really want them to see, that's a really effective thing to do. So those are some of the audiences and ideas and angles for segmented retargeting. When it comes to the ad objective, when we're retargeting, we almost always use the reach objective. In my opinion, by far, it is the best one to use because it gives you the best chance of reaching the most people that are in that retargeting audience. And also I really like using frequency with it. You can actually define the frequency. So for example, you can say, don't let people see it more than once every two days or once every four days or more than twice a day. You can define all that so that they're not seeing it too much. Or if you're promoting something that's running out where there's a timeline and you want to make sure they see it, you can promote it a lot, but you can totally control that. And I really like that. So I highly recommend you guys use reach as your objective for most of your retargeting campaigns. And then when it comes to retargeting ad copy and angles, we already kind of talked about this because you want it to match the segment that you're retargeting. But a couple other points, don't make the mistake of just selling in your retargeting ad. Yes, you can definitely do retargeting ads to go straight for the sale, but also on a lot of your retargeting ads, you should still be using my formula. You should still educate, entertain, differentiate, and inspire people, and then ask for the sale. Also make sure that your copy matches who you're targeting, matches that segment. Another few ideas I like to use uh, when I'm retargeting is if there's a limited time available or limited supply of something, that's something I like to talk about. You know, anytime there's like a fear of missing out, that's important. I would, I would say though, don't make it up. Only do that if there really is limited time or supply. Even just running a retargeting ad saying, hey, don't forget about this. Don't forget about so-and-so. And then restating some of the benefits and how you can help them can be really good. Obviously, there's a discount code you can incent them to purchase that you could do. 
Um, definitely resell the value in your retargeting ad and don't forget to differentiate and also match your ad copy to the segment that you're targeting. Don't just go broad on that. And last but not least, my friends, retargeting ad mistakes. There's just a couple I'm going to talk about. I could do a whole episode on mistakes, but I'll just give you a couple. The biggest mistakes people make with retargeting are either not doing it at all or not doing it enough or not giving it enough time or not looking at the whole picture. So don't make those mistakes. Like giving it enough time, I see that a lot. Somebody will run an ad and three or four days later, they'll turn it off because the numbers don't look how they want it to look. Well, guess what? We've run ads that have absolutely crushed it, that have made huge amounts of money that didn't do well at all for the first couple of weeks. So you might be turning off the best ad ever. You don't want to do that. You want to give it time. And also look at the whole picture. Realize that people sometimes need to see you a few times before they buy. And so it's very valuable to be able to get in front of them with a micro content segmented ad, talking to them about what they've already engaged with. You're not guessing. And then being able to do that again in an effective way. That's very, very powerful, my friends. So hopefully you guys use this stuff. It's been very powerful and very helpful for us and it could mean the difference between failure and success for ad campaigns. So my friends, episode 285 is in the books. Thank you so much for listening. If you want to get in touch, philgramdigital.com is the website, or you can DM me on Instagram at philgramdigital, and I will see you on the next episode. Peace out. Thanks for listening to the Next Level Facebook Ads Podcast. Please remember to subscribe and share this with all your friends. For show notes, more tips, and to learn more about Phil, please visit philgramdigital.com slash podcast.